So these are the fresh ingredients we're going to use, and then there's going to be a couple of frozen ingredients and some juices. Starting with all organic ingredients, it's critical. This is a fresh lemon. Throw it. Good and clean. And take the ends off of it. A little bit of the rind gone. You actually want to have the rind in the juice. Nice big wedge of lemon, right? Don't be afraid to have extra. Get the seeds out. You don't need the seeds, they're not going to do anything for you. Rind's really thick, I might take a little extra of the rind off. So next we're going to go with ginger. There's lots of ginger in this juice. Fresh ginger, it's got to be organic. You're going to skin the ginger. Add a little bit of water, you just take a steak knife, rub it. Skin comes right off. the ginger across the hairs the ginger the fibers if you don't you're gonna have stringy pieces of ginger in your juice I'm try to slice them kind of thin this is hard to do you can do it with a, on a cutting board I use steak knives because they're not super sharp and they won't cut my thumbs Skin, slicing across the hairs. When you pick your ginger at the store, make sure it's plump like that. It's not wrinkly and dry. When it's wrinkly and dry, it's way too hard to cut. You gotta search for the, the plump pieces. important because of the vitamin C and because it's cleansing and the ginger is important because it's an anti-inflammatory so this is the one that's going to decrease inflammation in the body so that's why we have to have lots of ginger and both have really good flavor and next we're going to celery this is where your minerals come from magnesium celery is both Minerals out of the earth. It's got to be organic. Any good? Good and clean. This is another one that's very fibrous, so you want to cut across those fibers. Otherwise, you'll have stringy juice. Celery leaf is good too, so if there's leaf on it, put it in. Two pieces of celery here. These are 
white carrots, doesn't matter what color your carrots are. Yellow carrots are actually really fine. Costco sometimes has a colorful bag with purples and whites and, and uh, oranges. Orange carrots are fine. Um, this is just what I have at the moment. The key with carrots is the fiber. Vitamin A is good too. outside of it. Carrot fiber and beet fiber are very unique fibers that are super healthy. They're healthier than most other vegetable fibers. They're really good for you guys. Three carrots in there. Broccoli, we don't need to talk about how healthy broccoli is, right? Vitamin C, lots of vitamins. Calcium. Organic, once again, everything here is organic. Has to be organic because if you eat this much vegetable every day, and there's pesticides on it, I believe you're gonna concentrate pesticides in your system and you're not, you're not gonna do yourself any favors. it down in there, okay? Beet, one of my favorite things here, right? We're gonna use the entire beet. The greens have a lot of fiber, obviously. Also, you get like nitric oxide out of these, which gives you immense amounts of energy. So don't waste the greens. Always find beets with the greens on them. When you store them in the fridge, put a wet paper towel over the greens. And it'll keep them from uh, wilting, and they'll last longer. And the beet itself, the, the purple, is a... Uh, Super good for you, the, the dyes in it are super good for you, they're gonna prevent cancers. Also the beet fiber, the carrot fiber and the beet fiber are two of the very specialized fibers that are really, really super healthy for you. And better than most vegetable fibers. The key with the beet, one, it's gotta be organic, everything's organic, we've already said that, but uh, sometimes the beets taste like dirt, and I kinda of believe that's because they haven't been cleaned well enough, so get a good vegetable brush. And really scrub the beef. They get all the mud off of it. They, they grow in the muddy, sandy earth. And really good scrubbing. Tastes like dirt if you get the dirt off. Before I use it, I'm gonna take this dry area around the top, just cut into it there. Cut that part off because it's not gonna taste very good. Don't skin the beet though. Just take off the dead parts. Alright. 
And then when you cut it, you can see this stuff dripping out. That purple dye in beet is going to kill cancer cells. Super healthy for you. And the fiber is great. And slice this so that the blender can get a bite on it. Just slice them in thin, wide, thin pieces. And pack it in. Once again, we're going to get really full here. And now we're just going to go through each leaf. You gotta watch it, watch the entire leaf. There's gonna be mud on beets. Even the leaves are muddy. I think they kind of water the earth before they pull them out and they can come out easier. Sometimes they'll be pretty muddy. Then the, leaf, the stems up so they fit in the blender. Especially at the base of this thing, you'll see mud. Leaves are wilted, they're rotten on the end. You can just tear off a piece of this, cause the uh, little wilting is okay. But ideally, keep a paper towel on, they won't wilt. Wet paper towel in the refrigerator wraps the leaf. buying your beets at the store, the leaves are going to vary, the beet itself is going to vary. The juice is going to have a lot of variation in the size and the amount of the vegetables, the big, each type of vegetable that ends up in it, which is okay. But for a rule of thumb, I try to find beets that are about the size of a pool ball or a billard ball, or, or maybe a little smaller for, for one batch. Sometimes the beets are small, so I'll use two small beets. Sometimes the leaves are not very leafy, and then we'll use more of spinach and kale, which I'll show later. But this time we're not going to need to add much else. Get the stuff is wonderful. Next, I usually do olive oil based on a count. Olive oil is one of those things I probably don't need to say much about how healthy it is. Most people have seen it on the news, but it's probably the healthiest oil. For, um, olive oil is a critical part of this recipe because a lot of the fat soluble vitamins, it's going to help absorb those. I usually do about a 20 second count. We're going to use a one, one fourth cup, a measuring cup to see how that is. So that 
that's one fourth. It's going to be about a half cup of oil. Maybe a little less than a half cup of oil for this batch of juice. This is enough for, it's going to end up being enough for about five or six servings. So we got olive oil in there. Next. Orange juice. Need to run and get some more. It's not going to be enough. Organic orange juice, everything organic that you can. This is from Costco, this orange juice. Once in a while, if they don't have it, I'll use non organic orange juice, but try to avoid it. So, no real exact measurement for it, but I try to come up. There's a lot of stuff in there. So it looks a little under half, right? I didn't want to use too much orange juice. Orange juice is good, vitamin C and all, but it also has a lot of sugar. We're not trying to use too much of that. Also, when we turn this into ice cubes, you're going to reconstitute it from ice cubes. We're going to be using orange juice for that, so we'll be adding more. The other liquid used is coconut water. You get your electrolytes in coconut water. Super good for you. Adds a little flavor. We'll bring the volume up a little higher with that. Up to maybe three quarters. Now we're going to blend it. We're going to want to have the top on at some point. There's a plastic stamper that comes with the Vitamix blender, and you can use that. Um, you're going to see me using my steak knife to push things in. Just be careful you don't use the stamper, it won't reach the blades. That's why they give it to you. It's got a shield to prevent it from hitting the blades. Stick something like this in there, you drop it too low, you hit the blades, and the juice is toast because you're going to get metal shards in it. Um, the other thing when we mix it, a Vitamix will turn this into a hot soup if you mix it too long. Don't over mix it. You're going to mix it, we're going to turn it into ice cubes, and then we're going to be mixing it again from an ice cube. You want to mix it enough now, but you don't want it to heat up because the folic acid, beets have a lot of folic acid in it. Folic acid is very heat sensitive, so if it heats up, you'll break that folic acid down. Especially if you're using it, you know, for a pregnant woman, they need folic acid. You don't want to heat that up and ruin the folic acid. You start out slow. Vitamix is going to work pretty hard here. You're going to want to keep your hand on it. It's going to jump around. If the lid's not on right, it's going to spray out. Uh, especially in the very beginning here when you're breaking all the fibers up, it's going to take some work. So you can shut the power down if it gets out of control. Start, start on low again. Gets a little out of control. Take a break. Reset. See after a couple of seconds here, it'll start breaking up everything and start blending nicely.
because I'm getting, I think I'm getting close. What I'm looking for is everything just sort of being pulled under. So if you bring it in, you know, look inside the lid here. Make sure you have. Actually filled up past the lid. That's going to happen every time. Is that all right? We have some last ingredients in. One is this blend I used from Costco. This is Power Grains. It's organic. It's uh, it's got spinach, uh, chard, and kale in it. Um. You could just use spinach. You could just use kale or chard. Ideally, I like this because it does have the variety. This is a filler at the end. It's super, super good for you. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, overdo spinach or any of those things and juices because uh, you get a high level of oxalic acid, I believe it's called, which can cause kidney stones. Um, so I don't do excessive amounts of that. Um, but I use it as a filler. So sometimes there's going to be there's going to be more of this, and sometimes there's going to be less. It depends on how big the beet was and how much beet greens we had. Uh, the goal is to fill up the blender by the end, so we're not going to have too much meat. The other thing is when I buy this, I throw it straight in the freezer. Uh, it keeps it, um, keeps it from wilting because you're never going to use it fast enough. You can freeze it. You can't thaw it and eat it like in a salad. It'll get all um, kind of smushy, but the nutrients, I believe, are preserved when it's frozen like this. And it cools off the juice. So we keep, we talked about not wanting to get too hot. So this last blend, it adds a little coolness. So I'm not gonna add much this time because obviously I was pretty full. Um, but at this stage, if the uh, blender is, if the blender is maybe down here because we had, didn't have a lot of veggies, I'll be stuffing a lot more of this in. So it's gonna vary from batch to batch. So sometimes I'm having more, more of these power greens and sometimes I'm having less, which I think is you know, not a problem. And then we're trying to have lots of veggies. The last ingredient is organic frozen blueberries. Always organic, frozen is nice. Once again, they stay fresh. You're never going to keep fresh blueberries fresh. And I'm just going to pop the blender off inside with these. All right. Push them in. Blueberries, antioxidants, all those things you've heard about. Maybe you haven't heard about new research showing that there's something in them. Um, you know, I think they're even called like reverse all or something. I don't know. There's a compound in blueberries that slows aging, reverses aging a little bit. So um, it's uh, one of those super fruits that is good for you. So we're going to step in. Also, the other key with the blueberries is the sugars in them and the flavor in them is going to make the juice taste better. It's not going to taste very good without a little bit of fruit in it. I imagine quite a bit. I try to add a bunch. And if your juice is not sweet, that's probably why. I don't add any other sugars besides the natural fruit sugars. Drop one and wash it off. Toss it in. Put a bunch of blueberries in there, maybe a cup, two cups. It's kind of your lubricant for the whole process. If it's not blending, it's not liquefying and blending down, just add more coconut water. Don't keep adding orange juice because orange juice adds too much sugar. Coconut water is your, your liquid. All right, and then we lock it in place. Now the last blend is kind of get messy again, so you want to keep your hand on it nice and snug. Start <laughs> Reset. Should the lids 
einen wilden Tag. <lacht> Start slow, and then it'll speed up. It's speeding up because it's chewing through those fibers, and uh, it's gonna, you know, make it easy. Some ice cube trays. I'm gonna freeze this concentrated juice blend. Here. All right. So you gotta sit next to the counter. This could get really messy if you're not careful. So I sort of have to bind myself. The juice is full past the lid. I'm just gonna open up the lid on the spout side, very carefully and very slowly until the juice starts coming out. And then we're gonna pour it in to the tray. This tree's got a fracture there, we'll pull that up. We'll just fill up all the little parts. One tray should get the, the juice down below the lid, so it's that first one. You can also put this first batch in a cup, if you're nervous, or in like a measuring cup and dump it out. That's the way I do it, but if you pull the lid all the way off, you're gonna have a mess. So just do the one tray, okay. Set it down. Now I can take the lid off. And you can see this is pretty thick stuff here. It's liquidy. You could probably drink it. Wouldn't taste that great yet. But there's a chunk of green in there. It does not matter. Just let it go into the ice cubes. You can fill them a little too full. It doesn't matter. Shake it out. So, for an individual, I'd recommend having half an ice cube tray in the morning and half at night if you're getting started. And for a family of four, we use basically three ice cube trays in the morning. Sometimes we don't do it at night, but if you're really trying to get the benefit, decrease inflammation, or kind of help yourself with some illness, gut problems, I would recommend twice a day. Half a tray in the night, half a tray in the morning. And I'm going to show you how to reconstitute this into a, a drinkable juice once we get done with this batch here. trays here. These are just going to go straight in the freezer like that. Be right back. This is uh, 
a half of the tray that's been frozen. We've already drank half of that one. We're going to reconstitute that tray. And that's we're going to be what we're going to use to make our drinkable juice. This one I got a big batch here that was four trays. I put a little more of this into this one. And then we'll use the rest. You can you can use fresh juice to make your drinkable juice, but it tastes better after it's been frozen and it's nice and cold. We've got the, basically this, what's left here is the ice cubes, right? You, normally in the morning you would start with no juice in there. And you just throw a few ice cubes in. I usually do half of what I'm going to make because uh, it's easier to blend. And then this is why we don't want to use too much OJ in the concentrated mix because we're going to use it to reconstitute. Okay, we're going to bring up the volume. This is going to be, you know, for a couple of juices because I left some in there. It's going to be a lean juice, but we'll just add some of our OJ. Once again, not too much. I don't want to make it too sugary. A little bit of coconut water. All right. small batch it's easier to go ahead and break the cubes up and then as I'm blending because if you throw them all in it's going to turn to mush and then the blades going to separate from the juice and you're going to have to take this off and shake it or pack it in it's going to create an air pocket in there so if I do it add a cube at a time after I've started the first couple <laughs> Now we've got also the fibers, maybe they didn't get broken up in the, in the raw batch. But now beat them into submission here, all right? So this is probably one of the most critical ingredients as well. I mean, they're all critical, but organic Greek yogurt, right? Um, plain, no sugar added. I use non-fat. I don't see the need for extra fats. It's not going to hurt you if that has, but this is usually what you're going to find is non-fat. Um, this is where you get your probiotics. You know, everybody's heard a lot about probiotics. Don't take probiotic pills, pills or anything. This is the best source of probiotics. But the critical part with the Greek yogurt, and I'm gonna use a lot of it, is calcium, protein, probiotics. The critical part with the Greek yogurt is the probiotics are alive. They're living uh, bacteria in the yogurt. If you blend them too much, using a lot of sharing this with my family, Crazy with yogurt. Sometimes I'll use about a quarter to a half a container. So, 
how to get our calcium. If you blend them too much, the yogurt too much, you're going to destroy all the helpful bacteria. That's what they do in a laboratory, in a science lab, when they want to look what's inside of a cell, is they throw it in a blender and it lyses the cells, it shatters them. Vitamix is very capable of destroying everything in that yogurt. So. so what we're going to do is we're going to go easy on it. All right. We're just going to turn the speed all the way down. Both switches are down all the way to low. Bring it up slow. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the bl yogurt blended with the juice. I'm not trying to, to cut the fibers down anymore or anything, right? Now we blend it in. It's a nice milky color. That is the juice that you want to be drinking. Voila! The end.